16 levels on an NPC, um, any NPC, new, old, and honestly, they even have this feature on things like the push. Um, they have the, this feature on a few different things. Maybe, maybe it's just the push. I'm not too sure, but either way you can take this and apply it to everything. And I don't know if this is like a drum month for me or what, but I've been focusing a lot on just groove and really just kind of getting the most out of your drums. So this is another tip that you can use on anything when it comes to drums. I'm going to be doing this on the MPC 4000, mainly because I've just been jamming on this thing so much lately. And I know it like the back of my hand, but on MPCs, it's called 16 levels. And what this means is it can take a single sample and play it at 16 different levels of X and you get to choose what X is. And a lot of people know 16 levels on the NPCs as 16 levels of pitch, which is awesome. Like for example, if we were to go and say, uh, uh, let's just go here. Right. And I'll, um, yeah, actually, you know what we do here. So if I go to 16 levels, it says 16 levels of what tuning, um, what's the original pitch and what's the sample where you'd be tuning. It's this, if I turn that on, right? Awesome. Cool. But this can mean and do so much more. And what I think a lot of people lack, Oh, hold on, hold on. I don't think a lot of people do this. I think I said that too quickly. What I think kind of may get missed at times by some that I've noticed, and I miss it a lot myself is adding velocity to your drums. And I just want to show you how important velocity is when it comes to groove and feeling. So if we find, let's say a hi hat, I have the simple beat I made in like five seconds, right? Nothing crazy. Let's say we take this hi hat. Let's imagine if we were to just put this across straight, just full levels, no problem at all. And I'm just going to play it in, um, at the, uh, at a 16th notes. So I'll say note repeat. I mean, there's a ton of swing on here. I'll take the swing off. Okay, cool. So we have all the swing on here. Let me go ahead and correct that uh, window. We'll just say 50. Ah, oh, I can't do 50. I'll we'll just, you know what? Yeah. For demonstration purposes, we'll just do this. So this is how dead on it is. Boo. Whack. Not good. I'm going to erase this. And check this out. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'm going to undo that erase and I'm going to just go ahead and copy this sequence so we can really hear the differences between all those. So now that we're here on two, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go into 16 levels and I'm going to choose this, uh, hi-hat sound. And instead of tuning, we're going to do velocity, right? So one of my favorite patterns to do is, so it's high, high, kind of medium, low, medium, sort of high, medium, low, medium, more medium, medium, low, medium, a lot to take in a lot to memorize. That's one thing that's great about this is if I go to sequence edit, here's a pro tip on the 4k. If you're not used to it already, if you're here in the sequence edit button, you can say options duration of recorded notes as played or timing correction value. That's what I want is just, um, one sixteenth. That's what my timing correction is set to auto step increment. Yes. Now check this. If I just press record or overdub, it's going to stay here and I can put this in manually. So I can say, da, 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 da. I messed up, but you get the idea. So now listen to this with the velocity on it. Already way more groove. Let's go ahead and try this one more time with something else. I'll say this, erase all these, and I'm going to go into our sequence edit again and try this one more time, but I'm going to just try and go. I know that across a bar, there's 16 steps. So instead of doing, uh, I'll just go down eight values. So I'll say one, two, three, four, this is going to be kind of like a falling cascading sound. I hope, I don't know what I've never done this one before. Let's see. Cool. Not bad. We can also try this one more time. I'm going to say next sequence, copy this, go here, clear that track out again, uh, sequence edit overdub. 
and let's try going What does it sound like? Right, but we can also add on top of this. So I'm gonna say overdub and just add a couple more. Now, if we were to listen to this against the original version with no velocity whatsoever. Let's listen to the second one. Sequence two is. Right, sequence three, sequence four. And this is again with swing at 50. You throw a little swing on this. We'll go here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna say, uh, I need to correct this. I actually really like this uh, sequence four that we got going on here. Oh my God, I hate this NPC menu sometimes. Window, we'll say 58, do it. Yeah. Right? You see what I'm saying? Velocity. It's so important. I know that a lot of drum machines allow us to just blast through making beats. You just like, you can, a lot of times when you get such good muscle memory with things, this happened to me a lot when I used the machine Micro, the one of the very first small machines. I got so good at it that I could make, or I got so comfortable with it, I should say, that I could make a beat on it without pressing play. I could just step sequence everything, cool, kicks here, hats here, blah, 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 press play. And I would often be like, wait a minute, I think I made this song just yesterday. So I wouldn't, uh, that's, I, that's kind of one thing that a lot of old school machines kind of help me with is slowing the process down and enjoying the process of making music and trying new things along the way. And it taught me that even just 16 different levels of velocity can go such a long way. Sure, in DAWs you got 127, Ableton you can do the randomized velocity stuff, and that is amazing, so use it. You have the tools to do so, use them. It'll make your music that much better, that much groovier, that much more fun, um, yeah, versus just a stagnant robotic thing. And once in a while that's all right. If that's what you're going for, you want kind of a dead on, really hardcore sound, it's easy to do, but I know like on electron boxes, I always go in there kind of do some different things with like the velocity parameter locks and whatnot, but that's kind of what I wanted to mention today. Um, yeah, I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, um, I am happy and I hope to see you again next week as I always do. And, uh, yeah, thanks for coming by. Love you. And until then I'm gonna be jamming on this thing, but you already know the drill, share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Let's get a bass going on. go 16 levels again but this time tuning that's cool but I'm gonna go uh, edit and take the uh, filter down this is when I used to have a, a Juno 106 I sampled it